Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Pakistan's Bilawal Bhutto rules out bilateral ties with India during SEO meet in Goa. Taliban recognition not a focus of Afghanistan meeting, says UN. And once the lifeline of Dhaka, Murigana bears the brunt of pollution. And now for all the details. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, who is scheduled to attend the meeting of SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, in India's Goa next month, has said that his participation should not be seen in terms of bilateral ties. Bilawal told local media that we are committed to the SCO charter and this visit should not be seen as a bilateral one, but in the context of the SCO. Earlier, India's foreign ministry spokesperson also said that it was not appropriate to focus on a particular country as invitations were sent to all member states for the summit on May 4-5. Relations between the nuclear-armed neighbours have been fraught for years. It will be the first visit to India by a top Pakistani minister since then. PM Nawaz Sharif attended India's Prime Minister Modi's swearing-in ceremony in 2014. At least five Indian soldiers were killed on Thursday after the vehicle they were travelling in came under attack by terrorists. The army men were from the Rashtriya Rifles Unit and were deployed for counter-terrorism operations in the area. Army's Northern Command in a statement said the vehicle caught fire due to likely use of grenades by terrorists, killing five and injuring one personnel who is undergoing treatment at the army hospital. Jesh Bank terror outfit People's Anti Fascist Front has claimed responsibility for the attack. The area has been cordoned off and a massive search operation was launched in the forests and adjoining areas. The attack is likely to cloud the G20 event to be held in the Union Territory later next month. Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Asif has said that the ruling coalition will not take dictation from any other constitutional institution, asking if is it for the Supreme Court to give an agenda to the politicians regarding holding a dialogue. Asif's comments came after the Supreme Court directed the ruling and the opposition political parties to immediately reach a consensus on the date of elections. The judiciary and the government have been locked in a standoff at a time when Pakistan faces a crippling economic slowdown. The top court had earlier ordered snap polls in the most populated Punjab province to be held on May 14 and said a date could be agreed later for Khaivar Pakhtungwa pending some technical issues. As shoppers feel the pinch of decades high inflation, retail sales in Pakistan have witnessed a sharp drop compared to previous years in the run-up to the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fitr. People are making lifestyle changes to deal with rising prices in the festive season. The lead-up to Eid expected to fall on Saturday in Pakistan to mark the end of the holy month of Ramadan traditionally sees the highest sales of the year. But this year, the country is in the midst of a crippling economic crisis. Inflation clocked in at 35% in March and food inflation has risen to more than 47%, fueled by a depreciating currency, a rollback in subsidies and the imposition of higher tariffs by the government. रमजान में इफ्तारी करें खाना खाएं या कपड़े बनाएं अब नहीं हर बंदा परेशान रोजी के लिए कारोबार नहीं है मार्केट देखो सन्नाटे लगे हुए वरना पिछले साल रमजान में 10वें मतलब आखिरी के रोजे में रश का शो जाता था तब तो अब नाम निशान ही नहीं अब तो the sales drop adds to the slowing of Pakistan's $350 billion economy which has struggled in recent months amid tough stabilization policies Pakistan expects its economy to grow 2% during the current fiscal year However, in April, the World Bank slashed Pakistan's growth projections from 2% to 0.4%. The UN Deputy Spokesperson Farhan Haq has stressed that the UN convened meeting on Afghanistan in May will not focus on the possible international recognition of the Taliban and will rather focus on challenges at hand. 
The clarification came amid concern and confusion after UN Deputy Chief Amina Mohammad suggested the gathering could find those baby steps to put back on the pathway to recognition. UN Chief Antonio Guterres is set to host the closed-door gathering in Doha of special envoys on Afghanistan from various countries. There's a, a need to reinvigorate international engagement uh, around the, the sort of common objectives that the international community has on Afghanistan. Uh, and so we consider it a priority to advance an approach based on pragmatism and principles uh, to have a constructive engagement uh, on the issue. So that is where we will be focusing. The Taliban has recently enforced a ban on Afghan women working for the UN after stopping most women working for humanitarian aid groups in December. UN officials have flagged concerns that donors may pull back on support to Afghanistan's humanitarian aid program over the restrictions and that reaching out to women in the conservative country without female workers is impossible. The Buri Ganga in Bangladesh is so polluted that its water appears pitch black. But a large chunk of the population directly or indirectly depends on rivers like it to make a living or for transportation. A report. The Buri Ganga or the Old Ganga in Bangladesh is a dead river. Fish have been replaced by human and industrial waste. But for many, this is home and they still depend on the toxic water to live, bathe and work. The river was once the lifeline of capital Dhaka. What's impossible to miss all year round is the smell. The Buri Ganga is so polluted that its water often appears pitch black and emits a foul stretch throughout the year. Untreated sewage, chemical waste from factories and byproducts of fabric dyeing flow in daily. Polythene and plastic have been piled up on the riverbed, making it shallow. <laughs> Like many fishermen, Nurul Islam was forced to abandon his profession. He now sells food from a cart instead. In 1995, the government made it compulsory for all industrial units to use effluent treatment plants. The problem is, officials don't have enough staff to enforce the law with round-the-clock monitoring. So industries often get a free pass. Mohammad Azaz, the chairman of River and Delta Research Centre, points out Dhaka also has no central sewage system and the authorities should look into changing that. To the delight of the conservationists, two white tiger cubs emerged for the first time from their den in the zoo in Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday. India's Environment and Climate Minister Bhupendra Yadav ceremonially threw open the gates of the den as the cubs came out and played around while exploring their new enclosure with their mother. The male cub has been named Vyom and the female is called Avni. India has about three-fourths of the world's estimated tiger population in dozens of reserves. Prime Minister Narendra Modi released the tiger census earlier this month that showed the population has shot up by 200 in four years to 3,167. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.